every message that is sent across Perzo is encrypted using a different key. So if a message is intercepted and it's been now stored into a computer center and they use the energy of the world to decrypt that message and uh, let's say they did after some time well they can't use the same key to decrypt the next message because the next message is being encrypted using another key so that's how we provide security to the maximum possible uh, level uh, in terms of communication. Uh, we have people who are specialized in security in the company, uh, but I've always been keen on security. My, one of my first responsibilities was to secure a uh, um, management system for France Telecom. And uh, so, you know, I got sensitivized on the different threats around that. Then I worked for, uh, for Skype and I realized that uh, security was an important piece of the equation. And, um, and as, um, as we created Perzo, we looked at what will be the best way to have zero knowledge and, and you know that's what they call in the, in the model of security is zero knowledge security uh, and that means that the knowledge of the conduit um, or the company that provides that conduit is zero so that if it's been asked to deliver any information it cannot deliver what it doesn't know. We have the data that's encrypted but it's technically impossible to decrypt this message without your password. So when you build a security system, you have to layer it. Um, you know, each, each layer will have holes, each security layer. So each layer has to basically um, cover the whole of the next layer. And, uh, and for example, in our uh, technology, we encrypt three times, three different ways. And we want to make sure that uh, if at one instance there was a particular uh, area that we hadn't uh, foreseen that so the next will cover for that and etc etc so that's how you build a military grade security you see NSA classes um, these encryption algorithms in in category A and category B and, and C so we use category B algorithms and uh, so the algorithms are actually officially approved uh, to be interoperable because you need to be able to interoperate as well with other entities who will encrypt um, so uh, the category A's are classified algorithms so you, you know they are part of the military domain and you cannot touch them. Having said that, military encryption is an assumption that the enemy is listening. Okay? And, and, and you have to basically create mechanisms to confuse the listeners and, uh, or to make sure that if the message is intercepted, it will be impossible to or practically impossible uh, to decrypt. So that's what military grade means. Um, one thing that I really like is um, the uh, with iPhone, the new iPhone that came, you know, the fingerprint recognition. Um, you know, as much as we secure the communication channel and the data, uh, the weakest link is still the user password. And, uh, and if somebody hacks to your computer and gets access to your computer and opens the Perzo application, then they will have access to your information, including your other emails and etc. So uh, I, I would love to see um, a proliferation of, uh, you know, authentication based on fingerprints or maybe retina display or some other uh, kind of uh, technologies that's going to help us to authenticate the user. And you know, you know, when you send a message, you don't need every message to be secure. There are some very sensitive information that maybe you understand, you know, once in hundred times, but 99% of the time, you're okay for their data to be relatively secure. But when you want things to be authenticated, you're about to make a transaction, for example. You want to make sure that that transaction is authenticated, and the best way to do it is using a physical authentication, like a fingerprint. So that's, I think, going to be kind of the next steps that we'll get into.